good evening. How are all of you? We're here live. Let me just share it real quick. And then we will be getting started right about now. All right, let's go. So I want to talk to you today about something pretty important. I'm going to talk to you about why winning is important. That's what I want to talk about. I give you a few seconds to share this status, a few seconds to get a few few folk on about t- ten seconds. A uh, lot I want to talk about. Ten seconds left, then we'll be getting started. Thank all of you for joining in. Always good to see my brother Isaac. He's always here, and I see Sarah's there as well. I'm um, not really going to be a QA. and uh, About five seconds left, and then I'll be getting started. Do me a favor, share the status. If you'd like to do so, that will help. You're more than welcome to do that as well. Um, rough phone call tonight. If you know me, you definitely going to get hit. If you don't know me, you definitely going to get hit. Either way, nobody's walking out of this alive. We want to talk about why winning is important. Now, let's discuss this here for a second. It is a scientific fact that all human life form, all of it, um, all life form on earth, outside of being human, strives for 100%, 100% maximum life output. And this is honest. This is, this is what we got to be real with one another. Trees, birds, Bees, laptops, air conditionings, you name it, anything else but human beings strive to get maximum life output. Okay? Now you gotta, let's, let, let's think about this for a second. I wanna talk to you about why winning is important. And here is my opening and initial statement. All life form, grass, bees, trees, cauliflower, mushrooms, even bacteria and viruses, they all strive to be maximum life outputters. When you catch a cold, that cold has no low self-esteem. That, that cold, that virus, that bacteria, is coming to live its best life now. This is important. Why is this important? Why? So what's the difference between you and a tree, you and a virus, you and a, a, a bee? What, what's the difference? Well, here's the difference. You have a choice. And that's the difference between you and a tree. Trees don't stress. Trees don't, don't, don't worry about where the next meal is coming from. If you put a tree into the ground and that tree comes up, that tree will do whatever it can to get to the light. It doesn't matter. If you put a bee on planet Earth, a, a bumblebee, the bumblebee will literally save its stinger because it understands that when it has a stinger and you try to kill it, the bumblebee understands if I sting you, I will die. Well, I'm, I'm, it's, it's unfortunate that I have to give you the news that many of you are bumblebees who sting people and die well before your time. And so it is very important to understand that winning is important, but winning happens all over nature. Um, poison doesn't take a day off. Grass doesn't take a day off. Um, I'm in the southeast Texas area, southeast Texas area, and the newscasters are telling me and millions of other people that a tropical storm will come in our area within this week. There's an 80% chance that the Gulf of Mexico will achieve a tropical storm. Now listen, listen to me. This tropical storm is not going to take a day off. It is not going to get sad. It is not going to misachieve. It is going to live 
to its maximum output even if it has to destroy houses, land, and in very unfortunate incidents, people. What am I saying? I'm saying very simple. It doesn't matter if you like this information, and if you don't like this part, it's not going to like the rest of it. Here is what is true. What is true is everything but humans strive to be excellent. Everything but humans strive to be at 100%. Because most of you will spend most of your life blaming other people for why you cannot achieve success. Because you have to. Because you reach a certain age in which you now have to take full responsibility of your life, but you can't. You can't take full responsibility of your life because if you take full responsibility of your life, then it means when you fail, you have to actually be the problem. Your plan has to actually be the problem. And we're not willing to do this. Humans are not willing to be 100% wrong. Humans are not willing to be wrong and be in harmony. Humans are not willing to be wrong and be successful. Humans are not willing to take care of their own responsibility. And here is the unfortunate fact. 90% of you fall in this category. 90%. 90%. How do I know it's 90%? Because only 10% in this world is achieving the life in which they want. Okay, let's be a little more generous. Fine, no problem. 20% of this world is achieving the life in which they want. If you have a dream and you're complaining, you're the problem. If you have a dream and you don't have it, you're the problem. If you literally want more out of life and you're not getting it, you're the problem. If you make $700,000 a year, you're the problem. Good job if that's what you want. If you make $7 a year, you're the problem. Good job or bad job if that's what you want. Either way, the truth is, we are here, and we have to take responsibility for our own energy, responsibility for our own actions, and winning happens even in nature. I have to say this because some of you, you looked at the title and said, you know, winning, why well, winning is important. And some of you have been taught winning is not important. That is a lie. That is a fallacy. That is what people who are winners... Excuse me. That is what peoples who have not won use not to take responsibility for their own actions. Why do I know this is a lie? You know it's a lie because guess what? You only buy the CDs of winners. You only buy winner books. You only hate on winner celebrities. Your laptop you're viewing me on and your cell phone was invented by a winner. You, Your football team or basketball team, you want to win every January or every June. Winning is absolutely important and winning is your birthright. But we come here and we get to the point in life to where we have been taught winning is a problem. We have been taught that to win means to silence ourselves. And so you have to be very careful about the people you keep around you because some of the people you keep around you are literally they are not conducive to you winning. They are antithetical to you winning. They are the problem of your winning uh, future. They literally give you loser habits and allows you to be a loser. Some people will, will keep you losing while other people will let other people stay around you and let you lose. Some people will be happy that you have bad people in your life. Some people are the bad people in your life. Again, original thesis, which I start off with. All life form on planet Earth, good or bad in your theology, your interpretation, all of it, all of it, all of it, all of it strives, all of it strives for maximum output but us. And, and that's a problem. It is a problem that you have not convinced yourself that you deserve to win. This is a problem because why not you? Why can't you not be the person who is supposed to win? Why can't you be a winner and have winner kids and do winner things? 
Who said winning is a bad thing? Who said winning means other people have to lose? Who said winning was not worthy of you? Winning is absolutely important. So let's go psychological for, us, uh, for a second. So psychology today and most um, psychological scholars will tell you there is two different types of climates. There is a mastery climate and an ego climate. A mastery climate is a climate in which learning is an and learning creates an environment that emphasizes skill, development, personal and team success, maximum effort, and fun. This is mastery climate. Okay, so you have psychologically. This is all psycho. This is all psychology. Again, psychology is a respected science now. You can disagree with me all you want to, but this is science. Mastery climate is a learning environment that emphasizes skill development, personal and team success, maximum effort, and fun. Let's give you a few examples of a mastery climate. Um, what's the coach for the Spurs? Popovich. Pop. That is a mastery climate. Put any one of his climate. It doesn't matter. He's... He's won time and time again with no-name players. Bill Belichick has a mastery climate. The Golden State Warriors, super team or not, they still won 73 games with people less than 30 years old without Kevin Durant. The Golden State okay, I am in my mid-30s. Until the Golden State Warriors, until Mark Jackson came through and established a defense in a mastery climate, and then Steve Kerr came through and established an offensive mastery climate, the Golden State Warriors have been one of the worst teams in sports history. Few championships and then fell off. You got to go back to Chris Mullen. But that's a mastery climate. Because you can put something in it, and something out of it creates success. An ego climate is a climate in which the winning is the main goal. Success is defined as being better than everybody else. Now let's, let's juxtapose these two climates. One you have to where winning is important as a system while developing one another's skills, while being part of a team success, while giving maximum effort, and having fun. That's a mastery climate. An ego climate is, screw everything else, winning is number one, and we have to be better than them, even if we have to be better than one another. And I'm afraid to tell you why I chose this topic today. I came up with it two days ago. And I wanted to tell you that if you're not careful, you'll find yourself in an ego climate. And you would be around an ego climate so long that you have no idea that you're the problem. An ego climate is a climate in which winning is the number one thing. Success is defined as being better than other people, other players. Think about this. Let's take this out of sports. Let's put it into real life. When you are in an ego climate all your life, some of your churches are ego climate. Some of your relationships are ego climates. Some of your teammates have ego climate behavior. And you have ego climate behavior. And you're not quite sure of it. There's a wonderful illustration about a fish. A fish is swimming in the water. And he goes to another fish. And he says, hey, bigger fish. 
Have you heard what they're going to do with the water? And the small and the bigger fish says, what do you mean? They're going to literally put dye in the water so we can't see where we're going. And the bigger fish says, what's water? You see, you can be a fish born in water, always lived in water. Water is your life supply and never know that water exists. Some of you are in so much of an ego climate, you have no idea that this climate exists. Let's define ego climate again. It is a climate in which a goal is winning and winning only, and success is defined as being better than other people. If you're not careful, you'll find yourself thinking you're better than people. You will find yourself only giving opinions when you look good. You'll find yourself only adding value when you feel like it. You will find yourself looking down upon others because they sin differently than you. You will find yourself in a climate in which it's okay to let injustice run supreme. It is okay to talk about people who are less inferior than you. This is an ego climate in which I must win by all circumstances. Why must I win by all circumstances? Because I am the winner. Even if you have to be the loser, this is my climate. Now listen, some of you have no idea. You live in this climate. You don't know. You don't know because you're the fish swimming in water that has no idea that water exists. If all you've ever known was dysfunctional relationships, if you've never seen a successful marriage in your entire life, if you've never seen a successful intimate relationship in your entire life, if you've never seen a successful boss-employee relationship in your entire life, you have known a world only in an ego climate. That's all you know. And since that is all you know, that's the only way you know how to behave. I know many of people who are unselfish people by heart. But when you put them in the team, they become very selfish. They, 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 they literally withdraw themselves. Not a malicious intent, but all they know is how to be an individual player. Ego climbing. Is a climate in which winning and success is the only things that matter. And this is why winning is important, because we need to define the proper way to win. There was a study surveying 268 boys and girls who participated in basketball programs in the Seattle Parks area and in parks and recreations. These young athletes perceived their coaches to be great coaches if they were in a mastery climate, and they had these five criteria. They liked playing for their coaches more. They, they rated their coaches as more knowledgeable about their sport. They thought their coach was better at teaching kids how to play basketball. They had great desire and play for, they had a great desire to play for the coach next year, and they enjoyed being on a team. Listen, if you work somewhere and you can't say none of this, you are not in a mastery environment. You're in an ego environment. If you are on a team and you can't say, I want to come back next year, you are not in an ego mastery environment. You're in an ego environment. Watch it. If you are in a relationship and your significant other is not looking forward to tomorrow, your relationship is not a mastery environment climate relationship someone keeps winning and they have created an ego relationship and all the friends that let the ego relation the climate relationship happen are equally as guilty as the person allowing it to happen you cannot win and have blood on your hands at the same time you cannot do it if you are religious and you disagree with me, you're wrong. 
because there's not a single religion on planet Earth that is a major religion that literally says when at the expense of other people. All these religions differ. They have different key points. They differ in different theologies. But the one thing they understand, well, the one thing they agree on is that thoughts become things. And nobody is going to tell anybody, let my thoughts kill you. There's not a religion on planet Earth that allows you to win and have blood on your hands. Now ask yourself, how have you been winning? Is every argument you win, does it leave blood on your hands? Do you have to win every one? Do you have to win every single argument? Really? Because that's not winning. That is an ego climate. If you spend your entire time winning and you're supposed to be in a team, then you are not winning correctly. Michael Jordan, if you remember him was so much of a winner that he made people like John Paxson winners, Bill Cartwright, Luke Longley, Craig Hodges. Winners levitate the ability of other players. Their presence on the court makes everybody perform better. Now, there is another type of winner, and nobody is going to like what I am about to say next. Let us examine the 2017 uh, basketball championship, or oh, not championship, basketball uh, season. It was pretty volatile season. You had the trader, Kevin Durant, and you had the um, loyal Russell Westbrook on two different teams. One was loyal, I'm using air quotes if you're over the phone, and one was a trader, using air quotes, air quotes again if you're over the phone. But something about the team Westbrook plays for, there's something there that we have to discuss. You see, the Oklahoma City Thunder, who did not start off as the Oklahoma City Thunder, they were the Seattle Supersonics. Yes, let's drop some knowledge. The Seattle Supersonics had a billionaire who is the owner of Starbucks. Oh, I know some history. This billionaire didn't keep the team over some, uh, let's just call it taxes and fees. He decided they want to play. Boom! Now you got to go to Oklahoma City. Now watch it just for a minute. Here he is, Oklahoma that has the top three scores in the league in 2017 on one team. I just, I just, I just beg to differ that if we put James Harden, Russell Westbrook, and KD on one team, I beg to differ that you would not call that a super team. You would literally call that a super team right now. You would be unfair. You would call everybody a traitor. They drafted them. No different than Golden State drafted their players. Now watch this here. Something about Oklahoma City. Not the players. I have nothing to say about Westbrook. I'm not here to say anything about Westbrook. I'm not here to say anything about the rap. I am telling you, there is something there that cannot hold talent. Now, you can deny it all you want to, but hindsight is 2020. 
And I'm just looking at the harvest. I don't know what happens in the, the, the front office or in the locker room. I don't know if Russell Westbrook is a good guy to play with or not. But what I can tell you is they had James Harden, Kevin Durant, and they had Russell Westbrook, what you would call a super team now. But they couldn't even stay in the city, let alone keep talent. Now, let's flip that. How many of you are losing good people in your life because you can't hold good talent? How many of you break up time and time again because you can't hold good people? Listen, if you keep having the same problem, the problem just may be you. Because there's something going on with the climate in OKC that cannot hold talent. And you don't want to be the person who has an employee or the pastor who has members that cannot hold talent. Why would you stay in a relationship that no longer serves you? Why would you keep blaming people for leaving you? Without examining, maybe you are creating a terrible climate. So let's go Harvard Business Review for a second. Harvard Business Review says that competitive arousal is most common and most dangerous when a rivalry is intense. Research has theorized that a head-to-head -head rivalry would interfere with rational decision-making more than any kind of rival. Now, let's think about that for a second. Here you are in a rivalry which can become extremely dangerous because competitive nature is there. Can I submit to you as Exhibit A that most of you are in a rival competition with the person you are with. And it doesn't have to be like that. You do not have to be in rival competition with nobody. Most of you have relationships problems. Let me help you. Everyone write this down. There is no such thing as a relationship problem. Yes. There is no such thing. There is no such thing as a relationship problem. None. No such thing as a relationship problem. There are only character problems that rise up and surface in a relationship. No such thing as relationship problems. No such thing. There are no such thing as relationship problems. There are only character problems that bubble up to the surface of a relationship. Why? Because you've been programmed to compete the wrong way. You've been programmed to win. Winning is important. But the reason winning is important is because winning should be done correctly. There's no such thing as relationship problems. There are only character problems that bubble up in a relationship. Guess what? Because a relationship doesn't exist. You and your partner exist. And your bond has created the side effect or the byproduct of a relationship. But your character and his character or their character came together and create a relationship. Stop blaming the relationship. Start blaming your character. Because guess what? When you pull you away, and when you pull him away or her away, there's no relationship figure silhouette standing there. There's not a red aura standing between you and your significant other. There's no silk, cotton, screen, you don't pay mortgage to a relationship. This doesn't exist. If I snatch you from your spouse or significant other, when I snatch you two apart, there's no relationship silhouette standing there. 
Nope. But you are. You are the person standing there. You are the problem. How are you the problem? Because we create ego climate atmospheres instead of mastery climate atmospheres. Let's go back. A mastery climate atmosphere is a learning environment <coughs> that emphasizes skill and development. How can we be together and not be learning? How can we, how can you be with me and I don't develop your skills? You Listen, listen, you'll never, I don't care what anybody say. You'll never meet me and I don't improve who you are. I just, I don't exist where you exist. If you know me, you could be mad at me right now and still have to say that when you left me, you left me better than what you could have because that's how I roll. I am not in competition with nobody. I am only here to make everybody around me better. But guess what? I'm no good to you if I'm broken. The only way I can help broken people is being out of my brokenness. But here we are, winning. Day one, day two, day 1,000, day 10,000, we're winning. And we win it with an attitude. How can you even have an attitude and be a winner? Mastery climate is an atmosphere that has a learning environment. Did you know that some of you, the moment your mate asks you a question, you automatically cop an attitude? Like some of you are so insecure or so conditioned or so programmed to immediately have a problem. So, okay, I'll give you a few examples. Some of you, since you're pre, since you're presupposed, or since you're pre-programmed to think that you're stupid, this is your word that you would use. The moment that you have to lean towards your significant other and get a computer question, you immediately have an attitude because the moment they say something. You feel like this person is treating you like you're dumb. That is not the case in most circumstances. That is your presupposed position that you are supposed to be dumb. So when someone says that to you, listen, you never knew you was dumb until somebody told you. <coughs> there are, everybody listen to me right now. Absolute genius. Everybody listen to me. You're a genius. But somebody told you you're dumb and you believe that. You didn't know you were ugly till somebody told you. But you're beautiful. But you have an entirely different... You didn't know you were too dark until somebody told you. You didn't know you were too light until somebody told you. You didn't know you were big until somebody told you. People have their own ego climates and they take their ego climates everywhere. Remember, what's the ego climate? The ego climate is I have to win, and I'm better than other players. And most of you, you take your little ego climate, and you walk it around, and everybody you meet, you have to be better than. Everybody you meet, you have to be better than. You don't add value. You take confidence. Everybody you meet, every church program you're on, you got to be better than. It's not your job to be better than other people. It is your job to be a genius in who you are. If that makes you better performers than other people, be that. Celebrate it. I'm all about competition. But create. Don't compete. Create your goodness. What does that sound like? What does that look like? You don't have to tear nobody down so you can feel tall. You don't have to look past injustice. You don't have to always have nothing in your business, but the moment you're offended, everything's your business. So here's a few things that will create an hostile winning environment. 
One is called time pressure. Time pressure is exactly what you think it is. The ticking clock. There's a deadline. Pastor said we got to do this by this. Boss man said we got to do this by this. And so when you think about auctions and auctioneers, you don't know, start getting the biddings and competition to the time is running out. Negotiations. You ever try to sell something on eBay? That is a pressure tense situation. And it's now, I'm a, I'm a outbid you, and I'm a outbid you, or I'm underbid you. And it becomes a cutthroat situation over five dollars. So time pressure, when the pressure is on to perform, we as humans, we tend to take from people. We tend to not listen to people. But here's how you, you want, if you want to spot a person operating in the ego climate, here's a few ways you can spot them. They're easily offended, ego climate. They cut people off when other people are talking, ego climate. They're always victims, ego climate. They're so significant that they can't open their mouth up unless they're being significant, ego problem. They're so low self-esteem that the only way they can function is in low self-esteem, ego climate. They're so not team players that they would literally sabotage and sacrifice a team so they can be comfortable with themselves ego climate they never listen to you ego climate they literally hear your name and the moment they unshake your hand they forget your name the moment it happened ego climate that person's name is the sweetest name on planet earth next to yours you're literally and subconsciously saying yes talk to me no, I'm not listening to your name. I'll listen to you when I feel like you have something to say that I want to enjoy. Ego climate. People who are never on time. And here, here's you have it. It's a multiple thing. They're a victim because it's never their fault why they're late. And then they never care about someone else's time to literally be comfortable by having that person have as much time as them. All of these things are ego climbing. And time pressure will make a person more late than they ever was. If you're in a rush and you always cut people off and there's plenty of time to talk, if you're in a rush, you're really going to cut them off because of time pressure. If you're easily offended, let the time clock kick. Let there be a deadline. Watch how easily offended you get. Here's another one. The spotlight. <clears throat> See, psychological research shows that the presence of an audience, um, particularly a high energy or high engaged audience, increases the psychological competitive arousalness. If you have to be more competitive, some of you are competing over the craziest things on planet Earth. I mean, seriously. You compete with your spouse. You compete to have the last word. You compete. I know people who are competing over who's the most humble. That, if you're humble, you're not competing over who's more humble. Wonderful story. A wonderful pastor. He uh, had a good church. Church says, here's, here's a wonderful pennant for you, charm on your neck that says, we got the most humble pastor in the world. The next Sunday, pastor wore the, 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 the chain, the peace and chain to church, and they took the chain from the pastor and fired him because he wasn't humble. If you're going to be humble, you can't wear the badge of humbleness. You just can't do it. Spotlight, what they, well, there's a way to fix that. I'll get to that in a little bit. And so there is a terrible mix of these winning things. Here's a terrible mix. Rivalry, time pressure, and spotlight. 
when you're in competition, thinking you're better than other people, and I mean literally thinking you're better than other people. You have an inferiority complex. So you literally think you're better than other people. You're automatically in rivalry with them. No matter how much you say, I'm not in competition with nobody. Yes, you are. You're in a rivalry that literally implies and means competition. Then you have the time pressure. There's a deadline. There's something we have to do. And someone's going to get the credit but you. When you mix all three of those together, you get a very nasty place of terrible things that can happen into a relationship or a team. Now, managers and, ex managers and executives, they must, com they must always deal with this sense of rivalness. Always. I always have to deal with this rivalry. They have to make quick decisions, keep egos in checks, and operate in the public eye without taking too much spotlight. And then they can never, ever say what they actually done. It is a crazy thing to be a leader. A leader is never allowed to say, look at how hard I'm working. But is always allowed to be treated like they're not working hard enough. It is, it is a terrible, terrible thing because the employees are competing with the executive, executive compete with the employees, managers compete with other managers. You, you can never say what you did, and if you say what you did, then now you're throwing it up in people's faces. It's a terrible place to be because no one's winning correctly. you got to be careful because winning is never about you. It's always about the team or the people looking up to you that you're going to pave and trailblaze the way for later. So how do you manage these issues of winning? Here's the number one thing that I'm going to tell you. So much the number one thing, I may just extend the whole phone call just for this one, this one point I mean. Nemesis do not exist. Nemesis do not exist. Period. There's no such thing as a nemesis. None. There is no such thing as a nemesis. Why? Because the desire to win at any cost is more powerful when a competitor sees another competitor as evil. When another competitor start seeing another competitor as evil, that's when we make them a nemesis. Now, here's the problem with that. In such instances, it is helpful for us to remember that the competitor that we have made evil has their own interests, their own parties, their own teams to look out for. They're not evil. They are you on the opposite side of you. So there's no nemesis. They're human beings just like you. Think about that. Let's, let's get emotionally charged here. Let's think about that for a second. Think about Democrat or Republican and which side you may lie. Think about that for a second. We've made one side a nemesis and the other side a nemesis, so we can't listen to one another. And the reason why we cannot represent the people properly is because the people talking are evil. Now, some of you have done your relationships like that. Some of you and I'm not just talking about intimate relationships. I'm talking about your friends, family, loved ones, bosses, pastors. You forgot that they are people. And you made them evil. You forgot that your baby's father is a person. So you made him evil. You forgot that your child's mother is a person. So you made them evil. No, 
They aren't evil. You don't like them. And you not liking them was the perfect excuse for you no longer to have to keep your character and behavior in check. See, when we don't like someone, we use it as an excuse to be mean to them. We use it as an excuse never to get the other side and to quickly judge them. When we think people have no empathy, we use it as an excuse to abuse them so they can understand. We use it as an excuse that if there's an interaction or an altercation, it has to be their fault. We literally look at our babies, mothers, fathers, ex-husbands, ex-wives, and we hate them because they cheated on us. They're still people. I'm not saying they're not wrong. I'm saying they're not a nemesis. Nemesis are only when we say someone's evil. They're only evil when you decide they're evil. Let's, so let's, let's, let's back this up. There's no such thing as nemesis. Nemesis is when you try to make someone evil so you can excuse yourself to have bad character towards them. See, because if you don't declare them evil, you won't cuss them out. If you don't declare them evil, you don't mistreat them. You don't abuse them. If you don't declare them evil, you don't give them social injustice. You don't give them your prejudices. You're not racist towards them. You can't be racist towards anybody if you don't view them as evil. In order for you to hate another nationality, you have to first view them as evil. And when you hate them, you're not being wrong. You're doing right by giving evil people what they deserve. So, yes, let's shoot people. They deserve it. They're evil. All this is winning incorrectly. None of this is winning right. Listen, you, you, I'm a religious man. There are more people in the church declaring people evil just so they can be evil to them. And that is not okay. Take it out the church. There are more people in politics claiming that people are evil just so they can be mean to them. Again, if you snatch away the Republican, there's not a red silhouette standing there. <coughs> Republican does not exist. We made that up. Democrat doesn't exist. We made that up. Those are people. Okay, let's go to another emotionally charged subject. Let's go to the LBGT community. So you've, you've designated them something that you don't like so you can mistreat them. And that is not okay. That is winning irresponsibly. Just because you don't agree with someone's lifestyle, choice, habits, mate, spouses, life picks, income, doesn't mean that you get to win at their disadvantage. I'm all for competition. I am always moving 100% ahead. I am not here to try to ban capitalism or competition. I am simply telling you there is a proper way to win. Win is when you win effectively and start giving back. Nemesis don't exist. You made your nemesis up so you can mistreat them. <coughs> nemesis don't exist. Think about this for a second. Hate me after the phone call, love me after the phone call. Listen, none of you deserve to be mistreated. Now, you feel that way about you, but then you turn around and mistreat people. It's not okay. It's not okay to miss people's engagements because you have a problem with them. It's not okay not to say happy birthday because you have a problem with them. It's not okay to hate your father because he didn't do... Listen, that's someone else's life decisions and choices. I'm not saying you got to go rush out and drink a beer with them. I'm just saying you don't get to hate them and mistreat them. Because when you declare someone evil, what you actually do is declare your opportunity to be evil towards them. Because we all want to be superheroes. There's evil. There's the villain. The villain has to be taken out. 
the villain has to die. Listen, the people you hate are more than likely just as smart as you. The people you hate are more than likely just as rational as you. The people you hate are more than likely just as emotional as you. They more than likely have children like you. They have a dad like you, <clears throat> a mom like you. They celebrated fathers today like you. They have kids. They have bills. There's no such thing as nemesis. When you declare someone evil, you give yourself permission to treat them as such. So there we have it. We live in a time to where no one wants to deflect the spotlight unless they get the spotlight for deflecting the spotlight. That's crazy. It's crazy that you can't deflect the spotlight until you get the spotlight for deflecting the spotlight. I know people right now mad at me for nothing. People right now are mad at you for nothing. We are here to make peace. We're not here to be violent. This, it, 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 it. You shouldn't stay in relationships that hurt you. You shouldn't stay in financial statuses that hurt you. You shouldn't be driving cars that are hurting you. You shouldn't be paying a phone bill that is hurting you. And you shouldn't demonize people so you can hurt them. It's not winning. That's bullying. It's not winning. It's taking advantage of people. That's not winning. That's creating rules to have people at a disadvantage. There's a word for that. It is oppression. Most of you are not winning. You're actually oppressing people. Winning is something that you do correctly. I'm not saying don't compete. Compete your butt off. Have all you want to. But you don't mistreat people because you're winning. Listen, you can be a sore loser and a sore winner. Those two things actually exist. You can literally sit here and be a sore loser. And some of you are sore winners. So listen, there's no such thing as nemesis. I don't want to move from there. I want you to understand that when you declare people evil, when you say my baby mama evil, let's, you know what? Let's take it out of kids. Some of y'all hate y'all family members. Now, we got to be honest. I got, I got about nine minutes left. We got to work this out because some of y'all hurting way too bad. Seriously, some of y'all hurting way too bad. Some of you literally hate the whole left side of your, some of you, some of you can't stand your aunt. You can't stand her. And you've demonized her to every time you come around her, you got to mistreat her, don't talk to her. I'm not telling you that talking to her is a good thing. I'm just telling you to speak and then, then to go on your side of the room with no ill feelings is always a great thing. Always. It's always a great thing. It is always a great thing to be nice to people. Old folks been saying, it's just nice to be nice. It's not going to change. It's nice to be nice. It is nice to be nice. But you need to stop being sore losers and sore winners. It's inappropriate. What is, what is mastery climate? Mastery climate is a climate in which a learning experience, a learning environment is encouraged. How can you be in a relationship and you won't let your partner learn you? What's wrong? Nothing. And when you stonewall them, when you abuse them, when you silence them, you're no longer creating a learning environment. You're in the other category, ego climate. When it becomes about you, when it becomes about you, that's when you've messed up. I get to do a lot of things in life. I live every last one of my dreams. I, I live every last one of my dreams. If I die today, 
I would have died well accomplished and on empty. I would not die full of dreams. I would literally die done everything that I've ever done. You can hear things about me, and I'm going to just tell you right now, they're all true. If you heard I was a bad person, that is absolutely true. Ask when it was, and that is exactly when I was, because I didn't come off the streets good. I didn't do these things right. The reason why I can say, hey, don't do that is because I no longer do that. I have mastered, learned behaviors that have nothing to do with my natural state. I want to cuss everybody out here out. Don't let this motivational stuff fool you. I'm as evil as everybody else walking on planet Earth, but I don't do it because that's not winning. And if you be honest with yourself, you can't run out here hurting people's feelings. That's not winning. I retired at 29 years old. You would think that was hard. That was really not hard for me. Retiring at 29 was not, I retired November 22nd, 2011. November 22nd, 2011, I haven't had a job since. November 22nd, 2011, I've been on my own since, outside the system, doing well in life, meeting my, my, my basic needs and above that. That was easy. What was hard, and you want me to say deserve that, no, no, I knew I deserved that because I told everybody I was going to do it. Here's what was hard. Not treating people in an ill manner. You know why? Because there's no way that I was going to retire and be a butthole at the same time. You know why? Because all of my income came from how well I treated people. Every deal I closed, every connection I made, every internship I did. I literally had to do like 12 hours of interviews just to intern at Lakewood Church. They would literally, we, 23,000 people applied. 23 people did the internship in 2012. Because they were hiring well and weeding people out. If there was, if I was a bad person, it never would have happened. I couldn't even be under Les Brown today. As a bad person, I'm so fortunate. You say, oh, man, he lucky. You know, he spent two years with Joel Osteen. Now he's spending all these years with Les Brown. That ain't luck. That's character. That's character and hustle. That's me working my tail off and me not offending people along the way. Because guess what? People like to check resources. People like to see who you have offended along the way. There's a, today, something absolutely amazing happened. I can't even tell anybody. I can't even tell anybody because the person I would tell is whatever. I can't tell anybody. Something absolutely amazing happened today. And it literally happened because I met somebody three years ago, four years ago, had no idea, never asked never asked where they worked, never asked what they did, literally was nice to them, came around, and they hold all the keys to what I'm about to do next. They just happened to be a millionaire and I never knew. They just happened to hold the keys to where I'm trying to go and I never knew. But on one cold night, I said, listen, I don't know you, you don't know me. But I do know we see each other every morning. And it's dangerous out here. So when we cross this path, I make you a promise. I'm going to protect you and you're going to have to protect me. Because I'm not going to be able to live and come back home and you won't either. Because it's dangerous out here. And we made an agreement to protect one another. 20 years my senior. Not even my color. That was the deal. I had no idea I'd talk to him today. 
and he was a millionaire. Now, what if, what if I operated in my ego? My whole team would miss what's going to happen next. My name is Antonio T. Smith, Jr. I can't tell you what to do with your life, but I could doggone show for tell you that if you do not start planting better and winning correctly, you will not have the quality of life in which you so deserve and which you so richly deserve and one that is worthy of you. Thank you for coming out. God bless you. Good night.